Hello, I'm Nari McDiamond from Mining Journal, and today I'm speaking with Steve Promnitz, the Managing Director of Lake Resources. Now, Lake's aiming to deliver clean lithium from Argentina, and it's got a definitive feasibility study and construction flagged for later this year at its flagship Karchi project in Argentina. Now, since Mining Journal did the lithium panel, the prices have kept rising, there's demand still obviously there. Steve, where do you see Argentina and more specifically Lake Resources fitting into the global supply chain? Thank you, Nari, and uh, thank you for all of you listening to this. Lithium is a very exciting sector to begin at the moment. We've heard now for some years about the growth of electric vehicles, particularly since the heart of COVID. And we've also seen battery mega factories being built around the globe. I think it was 152 at the end of last calendar year, 2021, uh, with the target of, uh, of well over 225 in the next 10 years. But what we haven't heard much about until the last year or so are the issues about getting that supply into those batteries. The focus has been spending tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars on cars and on on batteries without really focusing on the raw material supply, specifically lithium and nickel. One of the beauties of Argentina and Chile is that these large lithium brine projects are huge. The basins are normally tens of kilometres long, tens of kilometres wide, many hundreds of metres deep. And so just the sheer volume of fluid in them means that uh, you can can bring those to market and they can be producing for at least 25 years. When we did our resource on the Kachi project back in 2018, I think we used a comparison with Sydney Harbours and it was something like 50 Sydney Harbours worth of brine in the project. So these are seriously large. Um, Unfortunately, Chile has had some uh, recent issues around uh, changes to their constitution and their political environment. And I'm sure they'll get them resolved at some stage, but that means a delay in potential new projects there. So we're really, for large lithium projects to come to market, the market is looking to Western Australia, to digging more holes, and to Argentina, to developing these lithium brine projects. Thankfully, uh, where a lake sits is that we have not one but four lithium brine projects in Argentina. Our flagship project, Kachi, is well advanced. As you mentioned, we aim to have a definitive feasibility study, uh, environmental social impact assessment outcome mid year, uh, and then moving into construction in the latter part of this calendar year. So that's good that we can bring those projects to bear. But um, the beauty is that we're also now looking to other projects as well. So I think. Um, Further, Argentina has demonstrated that it's actually quite keen to see these projects developed. Um, Your viewers are probably aware that Argentina has had an an interesting uh, fiscal uh, issues over the years. At the moment, it needs to service its international debt. And so it's quite keen to see US dollar denominated exports and lithium as a way that they can actually add to those that, that export income. So there is actually an alignment now with Argentina keen to to produce projects. They're not looking for um, jumping any sort of fast tracking things, but they are looking to deliver uh, things following international norms. We've got a number of projects, Karchi is our flagship. and, uh, And I think Lake is actually almost uniquely positioned to become a serious independent producer of scale thanks initially to Kachi and then our next projects. Well, in terms of Kachi and your direct lithium extraction process, how is this going to be part of the solution? So the, the advantage of all of the various different direct lithium extraction processes is that they separate lithium from the brine. The traditional process of evaporation means you concentrate all the salts, and then you have to separate out lithium from it. And historically, that was fine because lithium was just another industrial mineral. Now that it's gone from $2,000 a tonne to $35,000 to $60,000 a tonne, there's an economic reason to use a better process. With our uh, particular partner, Lilac, Lilac uses a very well-known water treatment process called iron exchange. This has been used for more than 70 years. It's well-known in metals processing. It just hasn't been used for lithium. That's about the only bit that's new. And Lilac has perfected a way, a bead, that can actually preferentially select lithium 
and do that quickly, efficiently, and cost effectively. And that is the reason why in January, this calendar year, we actually announced that our base case and definitive feasibility study will move to 50,000 tonnes per annum. Now, 50,000 tonnes per annum becomes a major project. It'll be one of the big three uh, lithium projects in South America. And, um, and the reason we can do that is because of the lilac uh, iron exchange or direct lithium extraction process. It also means that we come to market more quickly and we can scale up more quickly because it's modular. And, uh, and that's, the, uh, that's the approach we'll be looking at with other projects as well. Well, in terms of adding the other projects into the mix, Steve, you did mention earlier this year, Lake set a new target, Target 100, to increase production to 100,000 tonnes per annum by 2030 and starting with advancing your other projects in the lithium triangle there. So, Karchi, you're expanding to 50,000 50, tonnes per annum is the aim. Now you've got a bigger target of 100,000 tonnes. How does this compare in terms of current global production? Can you provide a, a sense of scale? Uh, so if we go back to 2020, global production was only about, depending on who you spoke to, somewhere between 380 and, and 440,000 tonnes per annum. Uh, this calendar year, 2022, the market is hopeful that we might get to 600 or even 700,000 tonnes per annum. So it's still a sixth of that. Um, so it's going to be a major project. And some... Uh, Commentators have said, Steve, that's not just aspirational. That really does look like a stretch. I said, well, first of all, Kachi is half of that. Secondly, uh, with the lilac iron exchange or other direct lithium extraction processes, you can come to market more quickly. You produce a higher quality product more consistently, which is what the end user wants. And then last of all, this process with lilac produces better environmental social governance outcomes. Those ESG outcomes are a key driver of the end users that we're talking to in offtake agreements. Um, so what we will be doing is all of our learnings from the pre-feasibility study, from the definitive feasibility study at Kachi, we can actually cookie cut that to the next projects. When we're drilling our next projects, as we're um, producing a resource, we're actually processing those brines through test work so that we can actually deliver feasibility studies promptly. And whoever can actually come to market quickly at the moment and become an incumbent will actually have the wind at their back. We saw Pilbara Minerals, PLS, do that over the last few years. And we want to essentially replicate that, but with brines and become a truly significant, independent, scalable, preferred partner of, uh, of lithium production. Well, in terms of achieving Target 100, finance must also be key to getting that developed. And I know you've got indicative support for up to 70% of funding for Karchi from both the UK and Canadian export credit agencies. And Steve, since we last spoke, I know you've been overseas and continuing discussions. How are they progressing? So I have to say that the reason we actually went to Target 100 and the reason that we're advancing well with our Karchi project is partly because of the demand. Offtakers are very keen to secure this type of product because of its quality and ESG benefits. And the other half has been the debt financing support, long-term low price debt from the export credit agency and their supporting international banks. Argentina is, has had a somewhat of a roller coaster history. And so ameliorating that perceived risk by getting long-term uh, secure debt from sovereign states, in this case, the United Kingdom and Canada, means that you, you reduce that perceived risk. It makes the financing much easier and they're very keen to see more projects like this. So it's actually been a key driver. We're quite fortunate and I think the market is still yet quite to pick up the fact that if we can secure 70% of our project with 11 year debt, that's priced at less than 3%. I mean, you would take that any time rather than some of our peers that have gone out and raised a truckload of cash from the equity markets. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think we can actually work them better and in the same process, actually uh, reduce the perceived risk and then come to market more quickly. Our aim is to be an independent producer of serious scale. 
And there's only a couple of those in the current market, and we want to be right up alongside them. Well, Steve, you've got some key milestones to achieve this year. It looks like being an exciting rest of the year ahead. No, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're fortunate that we've actually put virtually all of our owners team now in place in Argentina after we'd appointed our COO last, uh, last October. And uh, now we're just looking to deliver all the other things that we've talked about. There will be some delays. The whole industry is suffering from uh, supply chain issues, quite apart from COVID. Um, but uh, we aim to be part of that whole solution. And honestly, where lithium pricing is at the moment, it's not coming back anytime soon. And so it behoves all of us to really get out there and, uh, and deliver on these new projects. Thank you so much for the time. Thanks for the update today, Steve.